Welcome back to <laughs> Zanji Does Tea. <sighs> this is episode seven and okay, there's a lot to talk about. First and foremost, hope you're having a good morning, day, night, wherever you are right now. Well, I'm filming this right now. It is the day before Thanksgiving, so you already know. Imagine I drink this on camera. I'm making coquito for Thanksgiving. So I saw the TikTok. I am not Puerto Rican. I believe coquito is like a traditional Puerto Rican drink. Um, I'm doing it again. So I know I'm not going to do this as well as um, my neighbors, my Puerto Rican friends can do it. But uh, listen, girl, I just, if you've been watching all the episodes till now, which I highly doubt. No, I'm just kidding. If you've been watching, if you're binge watching in the future or anything, you're like, what the hell is this setup, girl? I am confused. I am too, but let's get into it. So number one, let me, hold on. My camera, like my camera always playing with me. Stop. Thank you. Anyways, guys, I don't know where to start. There's a lot to say, a lot to catch up on. I understand I have, I've had a laptop, computer all over. First things first, if this is your first time here and you're feeling generous, hit a little like, subscribe before you're watching. If you're one of those people, if you're the other people that I gotta watch first and then see if you're feeling it, I understand. Give me a chance. I promise I won't let you down. Two things for the new people here. Um, this is Angie Does Tea. It's a series on my channel, completely aside from hair videos, but um, I like to do this advice series where people email me their stories and I read them on the screen, give them advice. A lot of YouTubers do this. They call it different things. Um, because uh, it's episode seven, we've only had one submission so far. I um, completely understand. I'm completely aware that um, my platform is still little at the time that episode seven is being filmed. I think we're at 281 subscribers, which yes, queen. I'm proud of my little 281, okay? So with that being said, when you don't have a lot of following on YouTube, it translate to what you're trying to do so for the series i don't have a lot of followers um or subscribers so i don't have a lot of submissions so the series has been me reading things on reddit and also you can follow me on reddit if you'd like i don't really I'm not really active on there but i do here and there give advice to people i don't really know how to use reddit to be completely honest with you but but um i wanted to say the other day i looked at court i play with me the other day i looked at Core Digest. You guys know what that is? I'm gonna just keep talking through this because I'm not doing this today. You guys know. Do you guys... <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> Let me get up. Core Digest, I guess, is like the same thing. Anyone knows the difference between Reddit and Core Digest? Please comment down below and let me know. If you see me constantly looking at my laptop, I connect this thing to my laptop to. <sighs> it's the whole process. So I've been seeing, I've been getting, you know, when you have like email subscriptions and you're like, oh, since when did this even. Since when did I even sign up for that? Um, Cora will always come at me with some crazy titles and I'm like, like they hook me in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, oh, I gotta read that. Like, what, what's the tea? So today I decided I'm gonna read some Cora Digest too, you know. I really like it. I feel like I've been reading a lot of Reddit stuff and it feels very repetitive personally. Um, so I'm gonna switch it up, do a little Cora. We don't have a submission yet. We've only had one, I believe that was episode five. Um, and I'm so happy we're at episode seven. Like, look at me, consistency is key. Yeah, this is my little series. I, the reason I do it or where it stems from is I've always been someone that loves giving people advice and I wanted to go to school at one point for art therapy. I graduated with my little art degree. I'm still fending on the art therapy part, but every time I do an episode, I have a little drink. This is really a smoothie, but I have my little orange juice from McDonald's, and that's just what it's gonna be today, okay? Cause I'm really, I'm really here. Let me let me just say this: I'm a Virgo, so what you're seeing right now is really me trying to work under distress. But I've been seeing a lot. I've been getting what's it called? I've been faced with a lot of um, content that's been telling me. It doesn't matter the quality consistency is what's always going to get you on top type of deal so i've been like you know what girl this is really me this is like the real me i be under distress i be under distress all the time there be background noises i be i be trying to pretend like everything is perfect but sometimes it's really really hard to do it so that's number one number two 
the reason my setup looks hectic today, I started a new job. If y'all know, I've been saying I've been unemployed for a minute. Um, if you want to get to know me personally, like outside of the hair stuff, I would suggest watching these series and following me on Instagram. Twitter is like, mm, I used to be a Twitter girl, but kind of grew out of it. And TikTok. TikTok, I really have been showing my face, being very open. Um, I've had this thing where I start to grow up and I want to become more recluse. I want to keep my business private. When I was younger, I was just mouth open, calm down, okay? Um, and I think it just, uh, what's it called? Taps down, no. Goes down to just, um, just wanted to relate to someone. And honestly, that's why I made this series. I want someone to relate. I want people to have a safe space and all that stuff, girl, okay? So yes, I have been saying I have been un unemployed since graduating, which so dumb so dumb how the jobs do not want to hire you immediately and also before you're like while you're watching this you're like girl the series are you gonna start it every time we do an episode i we do a little brief introduction okay but i haven't filmed in a minute um and i think we do a lot has happened in a while so i did want to sit down and kind of catch everyone up to speed but um yeah i started a new job finally got a job um very excited it's a work from home job I've never done the work from home, but I've always done a little entrepreneurships from home. So I don't think it should be that crazy. It's customer service, so it's not something I've never done before. And I had to make a makeshift office in my room, clearly. And if anyone is new here, I live with my boyfriend and their family. And, you know, there's limited space. So I don't just have an office, okay, girl? So I made a little makeshift desk, makeshift desk and i'm still trying to figure it out the goal obviously save my money up with my little new job hopefully things kick off youtube social media and again you know bread is bread is coming man manifestation okay girl and i don't know why i keep saying girl like that but yeah manifestation okay that's really my brief introduction this is my little desk i it is a bit messy right now because i just was like <laughs> Number one, you're going to sit down and film no matter what. And you just need to just calm the fuck down and sit down and film. So, you know, I didn't have time to make a drink, nothing. This is like, I'm just not even dressed up cute. Like, I'm just trying to give you real chill vibes. I'm really giving you like, this is what it looks like when people are preparing for Thanksgiving the day before, because that's what it is today. But let's just move on. And I don't want to drag this too long because I know people get patient. Um, if this is your first time here, I always do the timestamps at the bottom, girl, because I just hate people wasting people's time, things like that. So let's just get right into it. I do a little nail cam sometimes. I just got my little niblets here. I'm not going to play too much with this camera because she's playing me, but I did this like really cute winter blue color and yeah, my ladies, comment down below, not the spade, do you see that? Comment down below if you are a gel person or if you are a regular polish person or are you an acrylic are you dip powder let me know let me know um for this series we don't usually pick a theme honestly i want to start with this really funny one i thought the, the title was funny and i was like what the hell like what are you you know i don't know people don't really say this the title of this one is does anyone else think their kids are annoying <laughs> So I don't have kids, but I'm around them sometimes. Can you comment down below if you're a parent or if you're around kids? Do you think, if you're a parent, comment down below. Do you think your kids are annoying? I feel like there are parents that are very honest and they're like, I cannot stand my fucking kids. This is what they wrote. I love my kids. We have four. They are all six and under. Oh, chat. They were busy. Y'all were busy. Uh, we keep them busy and they make me laugh a lot. They're getting so smart, but sometimes I just want to pull my hair out. The ish they say sometimes are the constant questions, the fighting, and the bickering. It's annoying at times. Nonetheless, I take several deep breaths and remind myself my dad used to think I was annoying too at times. And I'll never get this time back. I'll probably get a lot of heat for this, but I'm just keeping it real. Some people are in the comments. The human is literally annoying sometimes, even the ones you love. Yeah, everyone's saying their experience. So I think, okay, um... Coming from a sibling standpoint, I like to always remind my viewers I was an oldest sibling 
for most of my life. I was an only child for most of my life, like the 10 year gap of my life. And then I was introduced to siblings and I became the oldest sibling. So coming from that lens, not a parent lens, lens but not parent lens, girl. Coming from a sibling lens, yes, kids be so annoying. Like I can't, like I already know when I have kids and they're under six, that age is like, even like from age one to 10, like that's a lot. Let me tell you, like kids be aggy, like, I can tell you so many times that I was like, are you kidding me right now? Can you stop? <laughs> All that to say, I think if you ever feel this way, it's fine. Don't worry, calm down. Um, It really is about how you react to it and to not be a freaking monster about it. Um, Cause you were probably annoying too. You probably annoy somebody already. So be a, don't be a monster about it and I think Kids understand we just talk to them. There's so many people that feel like you can't talk to kids like regular people. You can. What sense a kid's mental is when you like talk to them like they're a baby forever. You know what I mean? So I think definitely saying, you know what, sweetie, I'm glad you want to tell me this story a few times, but let me tell you. I don't even know how to word it right now. I'm not in sibling mode or parental mode, but I'm just giving you advice. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's ways around it. There's ways to talk about it. All in all, it's okay to feel that way. Trust me. Let's read another one. Okay. Ooh, this is a long one. All right, guys. The title is, I'm sorry, The Juice. I put a little energy drink in my orange juice and I'm like, the title. My cat suddenly hates my man. I came into a relationship where it is um, my boyfriend owns a cat. So I was very much the third wheel to the relationship that they have, okay? If you don't know about cats, cats are amazing. I really wasn't a cat person because I was just always raised around dogs anyway. I told my boyfriend, it is so hard to understand cats. Like, what are you even, how do you determine that you like me? And my boyfriend, who's a Taurus, he's like, I love it because it's like you have to work for their love, their trust. Like dogs is just so easy for them to like you versus cats. Like they have to make that decision. And at the end of the day, if you break their trust, do whatever, they will decide. I don't F with you no more. I don't trust you no more. And she certainly lived up to that. Those words. She was like, who the hell? Who the hell are you? um you stealing my mama because that's really what I see it like he is her mom and she's like you are my child like I'm your child or sometimes I'm like does she think he she is his mom like I really have no idea but they have this very family relationship I think it's weird when people do that like oh my pet is my man like that's my girlfriend like please stop it's giving this borderline bestiality is that the word for it it's creeping me out I think I'll always be a dog lover, but you know, our kitty, I'll put a picture on the screen because I love her. She's so cute. I'm like, I call, I say I'm her stepmom because she does not fuck with me. Like she fucks with him. Like she will, I know I'm going off a tangent, but she will only kiss me, like do the affectionate stuff, the purring, the rubbing her face on mine. She will go in when he's not here. She'll be like, girl, I love you. Like you're my bestie and all that. When he's here and I'm like, girl, can I have a kiss? She'll be like, I'd be like, no, the fuck you didn't. Like, wow. Like, and I think it is so sweet at the end of the day. It's like, she's like, no, like, my loyalty lies here. And I'm so sorry about it, babes. But when he's not here, we can kiss. We can hug. Like, you're my homegirl. But when my bestie's here. My mom is here. Like, you need to respect that. And I'd be like, okay. I'd be giving them their space. So cats are so sweet. I love them. And this title makes me a little, makes me a little mm, worried. Like, I, I feel like, what did your boyfriend do? Because my cat suddenly hates my boyfriend. Suddenly. I'm a 22-year-old woman and I have a rescue cat named Shiloh. I took her in about a year ago. She came to me very malnourished from a home that had over 70 cats in it. That's so bad. She has always been extremely affectionate, always laying in my lap, wanting snuggles. She loves to be held. She cries whenever I shut her out of the room that I'm in. She always greets me when I come home from work. When I'm home, she's by my side 24-7. She's very affectionate with everyone else. 
always friendly with my family and friends. She usually loves when I have people over. Okay, so like I said, cats are all very different. She was very lucky <clears throat> to have a cat that's friendly, um, especially in the conditions that the cat came from. I'm assuming it's because the cat was around so many other cats. I don't, I think cats have to be raised together to like each other like that. Um, like I said, I mostly know about dogs. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, I have been with my boyfriend who is 29 for two years when I first got, so she's 22, she's 29. I mean, I guess. I don't think that has anything to do with the story, but um, I've been with my boyfriend, 29 year old male, male for two years when i first got shiloh so they've been together for two years she got along with my boyfriend perfectly fine but the past months or so sorry i scrolled she has not been letting him pet her and she has began hissing at him if he tries to approach her i asked my boyfriend if he has ever hurt her he swears he hasn't I think I believe him, especially because I've definitely accidentally kicked her a step on her. Yeah, cats be in the way. Like, you need to move it. Or sometimes they think they can, like, beat you to it and just walk in front of you. And then you have to step on them. And then it's, like, mad awkward. Um, I thought maybe it was because my boyfriend has been staying for a longer period of time lately. He'll stay at... Okay, so this guy does not live with her. That's I think that's a big note. He'll stay on my place for a week at, at a time. He is slightly allergic and doesn't like her sleeping in the room with us. Girl, start to connect the dots. Okay. So I asked the, um, she starts to cry whenever we take her out when he sleeps over. So she would cry at the door every night if we wouldn't let her in. Um, I asked her vet if she has become jealous and he said that cats don't get jealous. Your vet is annoying. I, I think they're definitely an emotional element to animals. And I really hate when vets disregard that. If you're a vet watching, which I don't really know if you would be a vet watching. But let me know your take on that. Because I really feel like, yes, it, we should evaluate animals emotionally. Like, pets can have emotion. What do you mean cats don't get jealous? Anyway, the only reason that she would hiss at someone is because she is scared of them. She has seen us in some pretty bad fights. Our relationship was a little rocky a month ago. Maybe ha is that maybe is that something that has to do with it? My boyfriend has never been a fan of Shiloh, mostly because he is slightly allergic, but also because he is such a high maintenance cat that demands attention from me. Oh, she's a high maintenance cat and tends to run around and break things. But I find it so hard to believe that. He would ever do anything to make her afraid of him. I don't know what to do. I've never seen my cat hiss or aggress be aggressive toward anyone else, including her vet. Okay. I'm just skimming the comments here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Exactly what I was thinking. So people are saying, girl, the cats can get jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of people are writing what I'm thinking. First things first, and this is really great advice for someone who wants a cat one day or a pet. Um, cats, I feel like cats have great memory. Um, animals too. Emotional memory, if I'm wording this correctly. Again, I don't have an animal degree. I have only have good experience with dogs. Like, not good, but like life experience with dogs. Um, but from what I've seen with Pookie, cats, if you fuck with cats, like, they will put their guard up right away. And they associate things with stress um, and dislike. I can tell you so many examples. Um, my boyfriend has this job where he has to wear workers' boots. They're like the really big, chunky, heavy ones. Um, I think he accidentally like stepped on her little toe one time. She was fine. And whenever he comes home with those on, like she will be like, "Girl, I'm not fucking with you right now. Take those off, and then we can talk." She will, you know, and you've seen cats when they freak out, they're like hunched down and they're like, their ears looking crazy. Um, she does not fuck with him when he got those on, okay? Another thing, his nephew will be here. She hates sudden loud sounds. He got the Fortnite gun. He pulled that thing out. She sees it. She's ducking. She's like, get that shit away from me, okay? Cats look... Cats trust you till they don't trust you no more. And I definitely think she's associating that whole like, oh, when he's here, 
I don't get what I want. Like, not like that, but like when he's here, I'm stressed out because that means I have I can't sleep with my my mom. When he's here, I can't do this. When he's here, I can't do that. And cat animals feel energy. If your man is not really fond of Shiloh, she's feeling that. Like she's like ew like he's here to harm me he doesn't like me he doesn't trust me i don't trust him you need to sit down if you're in a situation like this you need to sit down um with your partner and tell him i'm sorry but my pet is something very important to me you might need to re uh, i mean not reevaluate but evaluate relationship dynamics here and see is is your cat something you're willing to lose to keep your partner or you know, I don't know if it'll be ultimatum situation, but I think your cat is definitely cats can be dangerous when they're feeling safe and they're not happy. Your cat can and will hurt your boyfriend. And if that's something you're willing to live with, if that's something he's fine with, um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely there needs to be a talk that needs to be had. Don't bring another pet in thinking like that'll help her be distracted and she'll have a buddy. You are her only buddy, okay? I mean, she was around 70 cats, but I don't know if that's even something she's used to anymore. You need to have a sit down talk and be like, hey, like, you need to change your energy around her because she can feel that. I think you really need a partner who, and I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place, but you really need a partner in this situation who will understand animals and is if he doesn't understand animals is at least willing to adapt to the situation or willing to be open-minded and be willing to help so like i said coming home with a more positive attitude will help letting him letting her sleep in the room with you guys will definitely open her trust to him can he take allergy medicine at night or something like I don't know if your cat is something like my cat comes with me all time out all, all the time type of deal nobody's gonna break that type of deal you need to have a sit down talk with this guy and let him know like mm, my cat is me i am my cat you can't handle this and you know what i'm saying because allergies is a really big issue when it comes to pets i don't know if you're willing to give the poor kitty up for him i guess yeah it's so hard i definitely think at the end of the day you should have a talk please comment down below what you think she should do i'd say don't give the freaking cat away obviously um we all need to find a compromise here okay and i think at the end of the day it's the kitty's feelings i would be most worried about i'm sorry I'm up to my boyfriend i'd be like you're my way you're my face i need to figure out what's wrong with my child so that's how i feel about that comment down below what you think let me know if you've been in a situation like that before you can email me at the email below if you have something similar or this brings up a memory of something you want to talk about yeah i don't think he hit her like i don't think he hit he hit the cat out or anything and it definitely then goes into the territory of do i trust my partner do i gotta set up cameras around the house like then we have a problem let's read this one i feel like we've all been here and let's talk about okay the title is my therapist doesn't feel real comment down below if you have a therapist i don't know anything about my therapist at all i don't know if she has any siblings what she does in her free time is she married does she have kids what's her favorite book etc i'm just a client and i'm definitely not entitled to her information but sometimes it's difficult to form a bond or trust with her because she feels like a stranger sometimes she doesn't even feel like a real person because I'm doing telehealth, it's almost has has a derealization effect. And I find myself almost panicking after therapy thinking, who did I just tell my deepest, darkest secrets to? My issue is initially when I first started therapy, I communicated feelings of transference because I never experienced validation or compassion. Com what was that accent? Done. Episodes done. Thank you for watching. Validation or compassion okay as i did in therapy and felt like she was a friend now i feel the complete opposite someone said do you feel like you becoming vulnerable made it feel like she's not real all of a sudden so i'm gonna get all honest and open with you i used to do therapy but then i had to stop because my insurance ended and then they were like sorry babes pack it up 
I loved my therapist. She felt like a best friend. But I was so sad because I was like, she's really not my friend. Like, she's really not my friend. I think that I've noticed people always ask me, ask me advice for how to talk to a therapist. I never knew how hard it was for people to talk to a therapist till I was asked about it. People who um, aren't used to talking a lot or aren't comfortable with telling people their business, I feel like have a harder time with therapy or therapists because you, you rely on that relationship. Like, I give you this part of me, you give me that part of me, X, Y, Z. You know where I'm going with that? Like, sometimes I think it's so hard for me to explain what I'm trying to say. With that being said, I think a lot of life is like, if you don't say something, closed mouths don't get fed type of deal. And if you don't tell your therapist that you need a little bit of closeness, relatability for this to work out, I don't think they will ever know. Now, I think it's kind of sad that the therapist feels like it's not necessary to talk a little bit about themselves for that relatability aspect. I feel like personally, I pull that out of people without trying. Um, but I definitely think my therapist, like it just was natural. Like she would always say, OK, for me, for example, and then say a little situation. And then I'm like, oh, OK, T, T, T. I'm learning about her. But I mean, in the end, it is sad because I can't. We're not friends. We cannot be friends. It's just what it is. And um, I even asked her, like, can I work there? You know, we can be co-workers. And she was like, no, that's not her. like that. Like that ship has sailed. That's just a, something you have to accept when you be when you take on therapy these are not your friends like they are they are liable to call the police on you and whatever and i mean yes a good friend calls the police on you if you're in danger okay but in this case you know what i mean you need to be a little realistic okay you cannot think about it so robotically um this is a real person in front of you and also i don't know why people don't like visual was it over the phone therapy? I love it, girl. I don't gotta move. I don't gotta leave my house. I don't gotta get gas. I don't gotta get ready 40 minutes before I stress out. Like, I think you should reconsider how you see therapy, how you see therapists. I think that you should, it, it shouldn't, for you to enjoy it, you shouldn't go into it thinking in the back of my head. Oh, I'm paying this person 140 right now to just talk about my problems. Oh, how boring. No, girl. These people study coming from someone who used to be a psychology major, made it my minor. These people study human behavior, brain functions, scenarios, situations, case studies to help in these moments. These people took the time out of their life to devote their life to learning how to help other people and to do that with no bias to do that with no confliction confrontation i don't know the word no like you know bumping heads and whatever there has to be a thin line and then it, that's when it becomes a career and that's when it becomes a patient and client type of deal even at the doctor's office or do you go to the doctor's office and say i'm paying this person to check my toe or I'm paying, or I'm going to see somebody who has devoted their life to helping other people through their, through what they studied and their memory to identify a problem that I don't have the expert expertise expertise to um, analyze. Okay, I know I said a lot and it was just like a bumble jumbo, but I think it, therapy becomes easier when you just see this as a person who studied and knows a little bit more than you um and is able to it's always like it's like when you see when there's a story two people have a story and people are like there's three sides to the story person a side person b side and the third person that was bystanding like watching from afar that is your therapist right here you two can be talking about mad stuff redundant wasting y'all time repeating the same issue not coming to a clear decision situation 
this person because she could see two two perspectives and has no bias has no feelings about it was just there watching this person can help you understand where you guys are not meeting okay and i think that's what a lot of therapy is is you not meeting with the logic in your head or the logic in your heart and needing a little bit of guidance to getting to your answer therapy people always confuse therapy is not someone telling you what to do it's someone guiding you to figure out what you want to do and that's another thing people think therapy is like oh why would i pay someone to talk about my problems and have no solution i want you to tell me what to do no that's not what therapy is about Therapy, again, is something that you, it is a luxury and it's someone helping you get to the conclusion that you need, okay? If you want to do therapy for cheapy, you don't want to pay for it, you get a piece of paper, write down your problems, think of it as someone else and say, what would you fix about this problem? What would be your solution to this problem if it was, wasn't you, but it was Veronica, your neighbor? What would you advise them? Girl, I would advise them to obviously do this and that. Okay, so that's what you need to do with your situation. If that makes any sense. If that makes any sense. Yes, it is sad. There is a hierarchy when it comes to therapy. And that's just something you have to accept when you sign up. Um, this is a great person that you can never be friends with. Even some people fall in love with their therapist, which is crazy. Okay, and the thing is, like, if these people accept a friendship, relationship, marriage, whatever they can get fired okay um and i think that i think i think i think the only way that it could work out is if the person quits their job the therapist quits their job and then if they want to reach out and it's appropriate to do so they can do that but then again think about it. it's never gonna work out because they know your whole life story and now they don't know yours you don't know theirs and then there's that kind of like role play of like, oh, you know my info. I don't know nothing about you. They can choose to tell you stuff, choose not to tell you stuff. It's very hard. It's a very hard dynamic. And I think you just have to see it as this is like an advisor, a guidance counselor, someone who is guiding you, a life guider, if you will. And comment down below what you think so far. But even in the beginning, I had said like, you won't get anything if you don't speak up about it. I always tell my therapist when I don't like what she said something, when I don't like that she didn't say something. And my therapist really appreciates that. And I think if you tell your therapist, I kind of need relatability. I kind of need you to tell me a little bit about yourself and what, who you are. Because I feel like there's this little bit of judgment. I feel like there's this like, I'm speaking to a robot. I don't feel very comfortable being vulnerable with someone who can't even tell me what their favorite dinner is and I think that's very fair like you're I know there are some therapists who try to keep it very professional very like don't know my business because they don't want to get fired or they don't want to cross that line of oh it seems like I'm inviting you into a friendship but I know so much about my therapist so far but I know there's so much she can't tell me and I think honestly, just asking goes a long way. There has been times I'm like, do you have a situation like this? Because she knows for me personally, when I see something played out that I'm having trouble with, played out in a different scenario with different people, it helps me kind of just back to that situation. The two and three people, it helps me understand what's going on. So I know that was a lot. Comment down below if you agree with this person, if you agree with anything I said. Email me at the email below if there's anything similar you went through with this. But yeah, guys, therapy should be fun. Therapy should be a, a moment where you're exercising your brain and someone's helping you. It's like it's like a project. You know how you do school projects and you don't really know the person. But listen, our goal is to get get the, the solution, work together, maybe laugh a little bit here and there. That's all it is. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I don't want to say this is the last one, but my neck is kind of hurting from doing this lean-in situation. I'm hungry. Um, I got to make the coquito for tomorrow, period. And uh, let's do a last one. If you've been liking the episode so far, give me a little like, a little, little video or something with your friend. Um, subscribe. <laughs> last one. 
This is a very interesting title. And I was like, what? When I first read it, well, when I first saw the title, this person wrote, I want to be a psychopath. Now, you know, usually you hear that and you're like, what are you talking about? Let's see what they're talking about. So they said, I don't even know if I'm a narcissist. I'm going to put the definition of what these things are on the screen. Okay. These are very important subjects. Narcissist on the screen. Psychopath on the screen. I don't even know if I am a narcissist. I am a weird case. And something is wrong with me, but it could be literally anything. I guess truly I'm very insecure usually and depressed, but I get times when I'm very confident and I feel very smug. Like I will get so confident standing strong looking in everyone's eyes and be talkative and get times when I'm very shy and I get social anxiety. It depends on my mood. I try to improve my mood by buying expensive clothes so that I can feel better um, than other people. I guess I could be a covert narcissist or maybe borderline because I do have a huge fear of abandonment when I try to even work where I even try to manipulate people. Okay, let's slow down. First things first, I am not a licensed therapist. Just because I got my little art degree, therapy, introduction, I am not a licensed therapist. I cannot diagnose this person. Um, if you feel like this person so far and you don't know what to do, definitely seek out a therapist. Definitely seek out seek out a therapist that can diagnose you because not all therapists can diagnose you. Fun fact, um, seek out a doctor to have a referral for you for behavioral health referral. Um, I think, please excuse me if I'm really wrong about this. I think you can check into a rehab for mental health, something like this, where you feel kind of manic. I think, please. I'm so sorry if I'm wrong about that. Um, those are your options. I don't know if I have any childhood trauma, but my dad is a class. The accents that keep coming out, like it's giving very like unprofessional. My dad is a classic, not classic. Like, what was that? My dad is a classic narcissist and probably a sociopath. He feels no empathy, doesn't even feel anxiety unlike me. Like, he was in a mafia and worked for them and didn't feel scared working for them. I mean, when you're in a mafia, you build different. I'm definitely much different than my dad. I'm shy and anxious. I've manipulated people before and been called toxic in Two-Face, which is true, I guess. I don't know if I feel empathy. Like, I don't really treat people nice around me, but I know I do feel some empathy. Like, I do feel bad for my mom and stuff, but I don't treat her her best. Like, I can feel bad for people, but I don't know if that's real empathy. Like, I can still lie and manipulate people, and I don't feel that bad about it. I'm definitely fixated a lot with my personality. Like, when someone compliments me in person, I'll write it in my notes. <laughs> I was like, okay, like, you're spreading facts, but write it in your notes. Also, when someone calls me toxic and two-faced, I take that as a compliment. I'm really weird, I guess. Like, at times, I'm very narcissistic, and other times... Not even to clown you, but you're really... That line I just read, it's giving me very... Like, I'm just, like, not like the other girls. Like, I'm just different. I'm built different. Like, I'm different. <laughs> also, this person hasn't identified their gender, so... Excuse me for making a joke right now. I'm just trying to really get through this. Um, I'm very self-aware because of my obsession with personalities. Like, I wish I was a psychopath and felt no empathy and anxiety, but I guess I'm not one. With friends, I guess I'm more submissive and usually... When we do things, I suggest things that we usually do, that they want to do, but they're more in charge. What you just said by that. They usually choose the music we play, and I'm okay with it. However, my friends and I usually do like talking about myself, like my issues, my personality, my clothing style. Maybe it's the antidepressants making me this way. I'm on Mirtazapine. Never heard of it. Don't know what it's for. Also, I want to get diagnosed, but I can't even get therapy for my depression and anxiety. Mental health services suck in the UK. All right. First things first, you're on antidepressants. I've heard that Don't I don't personally take them. I've heard that they have their effects, and yeah, that definitely affects you. 
just like birth control can affect your hormones hormones mental processes whatever don't know if i'm correct let me know in the comments if i'm wrong that's first things first second thing second it seems like you're very observant i i want to see you put that energy into something else you know i don't know this person i can't diagnose this person i don't really i mean i think there were some red flags on clearly i think you and i can both agree there were some red flags when i was reading this but it seems like you do have empathy like you were able to realize where to put empathy you just don't want to do it or don't want to put the energy into doing so you like when you said i can treat my mom bad i can treat her better that's empathy so i also wish you had said your age because i feel like this is giving me very i'm a teenager in my mid-teens almost 20s maybe not preteen. And I'm trying to figure out who I am and label myself. And I think that's a big issue we deal with when we're that age where we just want to understand who we are, what we're made of, where we can fit in, what label do we fit in with. I think you got antidepressants. So you're diagnosed with something. I, I believe that's how antidepressants work. You get diagnosed and then they give you those. Bad therapy where you live, though, that does suck and that is really not helpful. I know better help. This video is not sponsored by them. I've heard mixed reviews, good and bad. I think that could be your last resort. I don't, don't, when your friends are helping you with your business and your bad quirks and like, don't take that as a compliment. I think you need to work on bettering yourself and how you treat people. And I think this really falls down to figuring who you are in the world. I could be so wrong right now. I did... This is pretty a pretty challenging one to give advice on because I'm not, I can't diagnose, I can't even, you know. Let's see what people commented down below. Someone said, you know you can just learn to reduce your anxiety. You don't have to be a sociopath for that. Someone said, are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough exercise? Are you trying to meditate? And are you giving a lot of hug or affection? Get back to me once you try that out. So this is cringe. I can't believe you even wrote this. Yeah, I definitely think at the end of the day, you need to consult somebody. Maybe that rehab option wouldn't work for you, but there is something here. There is something here that needs to be addressed. And I don't think that you just should resort to the first thing you think about. Yeah, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Hope I didn't offend anyone. Please comment down below what you think or if you have anything to say to this person or what you would advise to them anyway email me at the email down below if you have something similar like this that you relate on um i do want to do one more i know i'm freezing i did say that i saw some good stuff on quora so i have to on my phone for that um, I'm like, y'all see the new phone, period. I have to go on my phone to get that one. God, it's so freaking cold in here. Yes, I want to read one Quora at least because I did talk about it. So it's like, girl, I thought this one was pretty spicy. My ex-husband moved on to someone younger and prettier and it hurts me that our kids like her so much. Would it be wrong to not let them around her until they get married? <sighs> you ever just like realize you shouldn't just kept going that's how i feel like why did i even do this <laughs> um i think it depends on who you are as a person what are your values and dating relationship your kid values who do you want your kids to know oh i don't know why i chose this one someone responded to her i know how you feel my ex and i had been broken up for years yeah i'm not reading this the person said, at the end of the day, my advice was be thankful there's someone else that loves your children. It's not a competition. It takes a village. Okay, I will say quickly because I am a product of a relationship, parental relationship, which wasn't together forever. My lights are dimming now, which means they're about to die on me at any moment. Um, my parents have been on and off for a portion of my life. Um, I did have moments where I got to meet the stepmoms, the girlfriends. And I honestly, at the end of the day... 
think as a child in the situation, I just appreciated someone treating me normal, treating me like my son, my dad's child, treating me with respect and treating me with the same love that they treated their children. There was one girlfriend I really loved. Okay. And she didn't have kids with my dad, but she had her own kids with someone else. She treated us so equally. I was like, that's my best friend. Like, that's my homie. She had a son. I don't know if you're watching this ever right now in the future, but I miss you, okay? You was you was you was cool, you know. Um, and technically we would have been siblings if they ended up getting married, you know what I mean? So I think that's dope when a girlfriend or a future wife treats the child with respect. So many times we hear about stories like that where um they hurt the, the child or stepchild or what have you she could have been nasty with me she would have been like you're ill like you're her actual you're this you, you actually had a kid with someone else and whatever that's what that's my take if you treat someone nicely it just goes in a, lot, a long way um but thank you for watching episode seven of zangita's tea i know that that core one was really short but i'm just so freaking cold and hungry at this point and i'm so sorry about it but i tried my best okay we're gonna make this go keep though we're gonna have a great thanksgiving if you had thanksgiving already watched this hope you had a great one i hope you're having a good night morning whenever you're watching this don't forget to like subscribe follow me on my socials okay we're trying to get the numbers up and if you have anything to submit girl email on the screen and when i say girl i mean girl and boy whatever you identify as okay thank you for watching hopefully the next episode i got this setup fixed and i will see you in the next one Damn.